Harvey Gann plays Guillermo in What We Do in the Shadows, the vampiric comedy. I'm Matt Noble of Gold Derby, and I wanted to start by asking you, Harvey, why does Guillermo want to be a vampire? You know, I, I, I've asked myself this question. Um, I think Guillermo wants to be a vampire because he didn't have a really uh, smooth high school experience and growing up. I think he was bullied a lot. I think um, he wanted to escape. And so these films that he saw in these books and um, he just became infatuated with the idea of being um, a vampire because, you know, what do they do? They live forever. They are after lust love they feast and that's it <laughs> that's pretty much all they do and i think he wants to be comfortable in his own skin and he really admires that there's something about a vampire that's so exotic and uh seductive and um and appealing it's like it's all the things that he, i think he wishes he could have been and isn't and he, it's not comfortable in his own skin so he has to kind of become a new version of himself and becoming a vampire is uh, the best way to do that. Do you think for Guillermo that like uh, Nadia, Laszlo and Nando have been good um, advertisements for the life of a vampire? I think I think he sees the flaws in <laughs> maybe becoming a vampire. I think yeah. he sees um, their shortcomings uh, because uh, you lose the humanity as you've been alive for hundreds of years. Uh, and that's something that I do appreciate about Guillermo is that he he leads with empathy you know he does mm. care for his mom he does care for nandor he does care for these jerks who are mean to him in his house at the end of the day he goes back to a, a theater full of vampires to save them uh and at the end of this massacre of vampires the only thing they can think of is like i have to take my own dry cleaning you know <laughs> it's like the idea that they're so selfish and they're not going to change you know this is who they are and i think it's a good metaphor for like you know, that family member in our household, that's never going to change. You know, they're just like the things they say, or the, it's just like, you can only take them in doses and Christmas and whatnot. And then you don't see them for the rest of the year. These people are not, these vampires are not going to change, but he loves them, uh, you know, unconditionally. And he would sacrifice his own, you know, life for, for them to be safe. And so, uh, so yeah, I think he, he takes from what um, the good and the bad from the experience that he's, uh, he's having with them. Yeah, and what's it like playing Gamma, who, who is like part parent to these vampires, part servant, part um, fanboy? Like, there's just so many different sort of dynamics going on with his relationship with them. Yeah, he's a little bit of everything to them. He's the guardian. He's the, uh, you know, he, one of my favorite lines that I got to improvise was in the casino where a bodyguard knows when it's time for nap naps. You know, <laughs> the idea that he has to take care of them like children uh, sometimes, and then sometimes really stubborn children that need to be disciplined, but you can't tell a child that you're disciplining them. You have to do it really clever. Um, otherwise they resent you. Um, and in his situation, he gets demoted. He gets, you know, another 10 years of servitude to Nandor. You know, the, the fear that Guillermo has every day that, uh, constantly is in my head uh, as I play him is that when he's around them, he's walking on eggshells. In, in season one, he doesn't speak, barely speaks in season one. And he starts getting this confidence about him because he starts realizing that things aren't happening for him. That it's 10 years of servitude and nothing has come out of it. And there's no end game in sight. There seems to be no, like, it's Nandor thought it was two years, you know, when he rewards them with a, a glitter portrait of himself. It's like, is all 10 years and it's like 10 years really wow okay you know it's like what is 10 what is a decade to a vampire they blink and a and 100 years have gone by and so he starts realizing that things are not happening at the speed that he wants them to so he starts becoming a little bit of um you know we play with the uh, being manipulative with the idea that like he starts to s steer them in the right direction and to maybe hopefully making him a vampire, which doesn't pan out so far, you know? And, uh, and then Beanie gets made into a vampire, um, her character, Jenna, and in the blink of an eye. And it's just like infuriating to him, the idea that like, like what do I have to do? What do I have to do? I like take care of you guys. I, I, I protect you. I, I'm your bodyguard. And still it's not enough. And it's, it, it, it's never enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is like, uh, 
the the confidence we've seen and the sort of change we've seen in Yemo over the over the course of the three seasons is interesting and this seems to be like it's brought you to the third season where I feel like there's probably more complicated machinations going on in Guillermo's head. What's the biggest challenge for you in playing Guillermo? I think the biggest challenge for me is that we're sprinkling all of these layers throughout the season. So season one was a little tough because we shot out of order. And as the only human in the show, uh, the only human character, um, <laughs> but they're all vampires for real. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only human character in the show, uh, we have to sprinkle it and the trajectory has to be, you know, um, nice and steady as mm. opposed to like the storylines in every episode for the vampires can nicely get wrapped up in a bow. Like they learn how to use the internet. They think they're cursed, bloody Mary, you know, it's so, like every episode wraps up really nicely for them. But for Guillermo, because we shoot out of order in one day, we could be shooting 102 in the morning, episode 102, and then we'll shoot 105 at lunchtime and a little bit of 109 by dinner time. And so one day, my emotional roller coaster of how do I play this character when I have to put myself in a mindset of like, okay, so we're in 106. And right before this, he just had that moment of like realizing. So it's a lot of mental work for me. Uh, and so the first year was a little stressful uh, just because we did shoot out of order and they wouldn't give us the scripts ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to set, and I always joke that they kind of they did the movie that way. The film was done where like, you know, Tyke and Jermaine knew what the story was but the characters would go to set and they would improvise a lot and you just have to get from A to B. And that was your goal. You know, just make sure you mention this and you get to here to here. Mm -hmm. uh, and so for me, the first year was a little bit like frantic because I was like, ah, oh, what is the, the arc for this character? Because it's like, well, I'm trying to give you what, you know, uh, to set him on a nice roller coaster. And then we got the rhythm of it down. And so by season two, we find out, you know, the Van Helsing lineage and then um, he's the badass and he's like kicking butt. Uh, and so all of those elements in, that we get to like sprinkle along the way are very nice. And uh, I think the biggest challenge has just been um, my own personal, like wanting to know what's going to happen with him, because uh, I, I, I'm leading him in the direction that I'm told and given with script and words, uh, which we have amazing writers. So, you know, that part is, is easy, but it's also like, where's he going? So I know what to like sprinkle in now. So where's he going? So I know. And they're like, oh, we can't tell you everything. And I was like, <laughs> you tell me some things because it'd be nice to, <laughs> you know, to kind of sprinkle a little bit of like, oh, there it is. Even the name, the La Cruz, I gave him that last name. He had no last name. And I went to Jermaine and I said, hey, can I give him a last name? It's weird to just call him Guillermo. He must have a last name, right? And he was like, what are you thinking? And I was like, uh, the La Cruz, is that okay? He's like, what does that mean? And I said, it means of the cross. Is that okay? And he goes, that's perfect and i was like oh but not knowing the van helsing storyline at all uh -huh. so i accidentally gave him a perfect name for a van helsing of the cross and living with vampires these vampires in 10 years never once memorized his name and never yeah. knew that they were living with someone whose lineage in his name it's in his name of the cross you can't even say that out loud in the household uh it's in spanish uh so so it was nice to accidentally fall into that and then we went along with that and just like, you know, moving along. I'm really excited about the storylines where they're going. How has the sort of ensemble dynamic evolved over the course of the three seasons? I mean, the thing is, I, I do a lot of my scenes with Kayvon and I was so worried because I was supposed to have a chemistry read before the pilot with him. They had cast everyone in the show except for Guillermo. And truth be told, I was too young for Guillermo. Guillermo's character was written 20 years older. And uh, my, even my agent's like, you're probably going to be the wild card. You're going to be the wild card. And you're going to do uh, chemistry with the, the guy who's already been cast as, uh, as Nandor. And I was like, okay. And the chemistry read never came. I was waiting and waiting, waiting for this chemistry. And it was a wild card. And then one Sunday afternoon, I get getting a phone call from like a 16 digit number. Finally, I picked up and it was Taika. And he goes, hey, is this Javi? And I was like, yeah. He goes, hey, it's Taika and Jermaine. And I was like, uh yes i'm testing for you he's like no you're not testing and i was like oh thank you for calling i appreciate the opportunity i, I wish you all the best in the show. <laughs> so i thought he was just gonna give me like sorry about that and we went in the yeah. different direction because we start production on tuesday and so sunday and i booked it he's like you got it and i had to call my agents and tell them and i was like wait i didn't test with the guy who's playing andor and monday was martin luther king day and tuesday i had a fitting and wednesday i was on the set well and it happened so quickly and uh, on the first day of set i was like 
I met Kayvon. I was like, I hope this works out because, you know, sometimes you never know with an actor, you might have chemistry, you might not. And the second he opened his mouth, like I was just like, he was like, hey, he was so lovely and welcoming and warm. And to this day, I can say Tom Blue in the face, he's the best scene partner I have ever had uh, the privilege of working with and uh, has become a dear friend. Mm. They probably, maybe they're on a tight timeline and they were like, look, with the nature of this show, if the chemistry doesn't work out, we can kill him a few episodes in. Right, right, exactly. Someone else, yeah. Exactly. And then the idea that, like, you know, it didn't, it, the important chemistry had to be with Kayvon, that familiar and, you know, mm. master relationship. Uh, the other vampires are a holes to him, so that didn't matter regardless. <laughs> 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 so they were like, I think you guys got it. Uh, yeah. so that that I don't think they were too worried about that chemistry or that yeah. side of it. They were more, I think, uh, concerned about this dynamic with uh, uh, where people have you know come up to me and was like, You guys, I just you two, it's just when you're together, there's this really special, you know, um, chemistry between those two characters, uh, mm -hmm. that people seem to love and has yeah. become, you know, like a, a bit of a the heart of the show. Hey, you've survived three seasons. It must be working. <laughs> the the uh, what what is it like those big group scenes where you got yourself and all the vampires together? You know, the final. There's a great one where you're all trying to get wrangled for a group photo. What what is it like the dynamics when you have to sort of all be, be bouncing off each other, making sure I guess you don't tread on each other's toes and make each other look good while at the same time getting your own lines and bits in it's it's the funnest it's when we're all together and just like we were doing that portrait and then uh doug jones was there and sort of painting him and the only person that wasn't there was con robinson because um he spoiler died uh <laughs> but being there and when everyone's there with their energy and like i said this before and i'll say it again it's just like the, everyone's so perfectly cast in their roles like i can't imagine anyone else playing naja or laszlo or uh nandor um or even guillermo now you know it's just like the idea is it's like everyone's so good and it's playing like hot potato and you're playing hot potato with everyone and no one ever drops it like they just keep going like we've had takes that will never be seen like you'll never see these outtakes because some of them you know season one we had a take that it was like a who's on first kind of like sliding doors like we're going into the room in and out and then guillermo i'm over here and he goes like benny hill ba -da -ba -da 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 -da. you know it's like one room goes in and the person comes out from the other side they go out this way because and everyone got in on it like nacho come in so like who's yelling and it comes he goes out of the room and he's like and so like nacho my lady love and then like exits and like everyone it was just the dynamic is perfect and the chemistry and the timing uh is so ideal that uh it's just it's just a pleasure to go to work with everyone yeah oh it's cool what about um do, what do you find particularly funny about this show like where what where do you think the the real sort of like um crux of the humor lies i mean i really do think that it comes from how much for me personally how much guillermo just grounded for me that um i can't be as big as the vampires the vampires are bigger than life obviously and i love that kind of comedy it's just like a farcical you know like idea uh i was talking to stephanie robinson our our showrunner ep and writer she was saying we're making a cartoon, you know what I mean? Like we're making a cartoon that's actually grounded with real people. And we have a baron vomiting profusely in the sky after eating pizza pie, you know what I mean? Like for me, that kind of humor is just like, we have a, a baron like flying in the middle of the sky with special effects. We have gargoyles that come to life. We have a troll that uh, takes offense to that old saying, you know, uh, the troll that holds, you know, the bridge and or lives under the bridge. like that idea that we're like we've talked about it we talk about these mythical creatures in the past and to actually dive into like what's important to them <laughs> what, is, what is important to these creatures and to really uh be grounded with that idea of like this is important to them to the baron to the trolls to the gargoyles to the witches who steal your semen like this is important you know this is important stuff that that people need to address and uh an idea that we take it so seriously that's what makes it so fun Mm. do you um have a was there a moment in season three that brought you particular uh joy you found particularly funny i mean there's a lot that brings me joy i'm trying to think of one particular episode um i mean i love that we we get to explore um more of like the, the return of the baron um i really like that um i also like that um 
I'm trying to like not sprinkle too much of it because <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like coming soon and it's like, oh, that is not aired yet. So do not mention <laughs> you almost got me. Yeah. Where to go, Matt? <laughs> oh, wow. um, I think this episode, the um, season three episodes were really great because um, it just uh, it, 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 it just led to a nice finale and it led to a really heartwarming moment of uh, what's important to Guillermo, what's important to Nandor, and what's important to Laszlo, and what's important to Naja, and then we lost one of our own. So it was really heartfelt. Like the finale was very full of heart. Like it was like Colin Robinson's dead. Um, Naja, um, it thinks she's going to go off to the UK and become, you know, uh, this new version of herself. And to protect her, Laszlo pushes me into a coffin and seals me in, unbeknownst to him that I have plans of my own, that I wanted to travel the world with my net with my master you know what i mean yeah and everyone's uh everyone's desires have a ripple effect my wants and my needs have a a, a ripple effect on someone else and at, at in, the, in that moment it doesn't matter because you want to get what you want we all want to get what we want in life and without knowing you might be hurting someone <laughs> else stopping yeah. them from getting what they want so it was really just heartfelt and it ended in a nice climactic moment and people were like upset and angry and crying and like no like how could you at mad at laszlo and it was just uh it just goes to show that people really do care for these characters you know they're really invested into into the show mm. what have you learned from being in this show for three years so what, have what? Gro- what have you learned I've, or grown in i always i i think about this as as we go into like the next following season it's like wow we're not where we started and we're not where we're going to end so what i've learned is that um you can't plan life (laughs) you can never plan a life that you think is perfect for you the idea that guillermo keeps on wanting this perfect idea of becoming a vampire because everything will be fixed right we always think about that if i had that perfect job if i had all the money in the world if i had uh that Brazilian butt lift, or if I had, you know, whatever makes you more confident, you think all your problems will go away. But usually they don't go away. They usually just mask it or they put a bandaid over the real problem, which is your own internal struggle, whatever is not making you happy. So the idea that you can plan life as much as you want and life's going to turn out the way it's going to turn out. Yeah. Do you think um, as an uh, actor or comedic actor, is anything you've learned or grown in as well? I just, I learned to appreciate, you know, um, the dynamic that like different actors bring to the show. We'll have guest stars that come in and totally change the dynamic. We just, you know, uh, welcome back Kristen Schott, who's lovely and wonderful and her energy is just like, I get excited when she's on set and she just brings this light to the show. Um, But when she's the character, it's just a different person. Kristen herself is, uh, you know, the energy that she brings on set. And then when she turns it on, it's a different character, uh, which makes a difference. You know, we work long hours. And so it makes a difference when you're walking down the hall at four in the morning and you see someone that you're like, yes, you know, and she's still bubbly and fun and, and, and loves being there. It does, uh, it does make a difference. And we've been lucky enough to have guest stars who just bring a different dynamic every time. It's just like, it's nice. Mm. Oh, that's cool. Uh, the show also did super well at the Emmy Awards for season two. Uh, you really broke through with like, I don't know the numbers in front of you, but I think like 10 nominations. Um, what what was that like to be in, sort of embraced by the industry? A show that particularly for that first season was a pretty sort of small off the radar show. I mean, it was wonderful. I, I, I yeah, I'll, I'll echo what you said. I didn't expect it. I was just like, people who get it will get it you know and I was like I like to you know sometimes your darlings are the ones that like uh, sometimes no one sees you know you like you do a project you're like oh, I really love doing this project and then you do like a multi-million dollar blockbuster film and you know and then it's not the same craft that you put into something that's sweet and like tender that you were like that's my baby you know and it's like nobody saw that you know somebody do that <laughs> uh and with this uh I was just so pleased that like it was word of mouth like the cool kids saw it first and it was like you know like the, the show that was based off the film and then people were like you have to watch this and word of mouth got out and then and then eventually the critics were just like you know uh, it was so lovely for them to like just uh, embrace us and whatnot and and to really acknowledge like you know it's great writing and it's great uh uh directing editing it's great costumes it's just like everyone is so excited to go to work like this team goes above and beyond like 
you know, Laura Montgomery, our customer designer, who um, it's the only details, you know, we we're just talking about Guillermo's costume, how everything is thought out, you know, even the tuck of, of his pants into his boot gives him a more like um, structure leg. So when he is in, in fighting mode, it's, um, it looks different. The flow of the cape of his trench coat, like everything has been thought out. It's not by accident. He just puts on this coat and then he puts on this blue vest. Uh, that's more fitted it's no longer frumpy it's like everyone has thought about every single thing because they're so invested in making this show the best it can be mm. that's awesome i what i love about sort of shows like this is often like you've got great big moments but also just the little mannerisms and 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 moments and little off little lines and things can you think of a like little moment that makes a big impact on the show or a little thing or trait? I mean, I think the them allowing us to improvise, mm -hmm. it makes a world of a difference uh, because then you leave that world and you go back to like um, another project, which, you know, I've been doing a couple of projects since we took a break from uh, the last season that we shot and it's not the norm, you know? <laughs> so you get in your head, you're like, everyone likes to improvise, right? And then you get to send it like stick to the script. And it's like, right, 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 right. You know, it's just like, it's the cat went outside, not the cat's outside, you know, or something. Yeah. Where it's just like, um, it, it being able to improvise is such a huge gift that um, we don't take for granted just because it's like, it's what makes the show uh, breathe and, and, and feel real is that we incorporate, it, we're saying the lines the way they wrote them. We always do a take with exactly the way they the writing is phenomenal. And then they let us do an improvised take. And in the editing room, it'll be like Jermaine said, it'll be like 50-50. Like 50 will be improvised and 50 will be the scripture version, but you're still in the same world. It just felt natural for these characters to say it in this way. Like I'll get a line, I'll be like, I don't know if Guillermo would say it like that. Does this work? And I say it out loud. And then they're like, oh yeah, that's better. And then we can switch it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so having that gift of improvising and, and, and collaborating with, you know, with Stephanie and Paul and everyone is a, a huge gift that doesn't always happen on every set. And so that is um, something that goes a long way, I think, uh, for me and, uh, and for the show. Mm. Well, Harvey, thanks so much for talking to us today. People going to goldderby.com can watch other interviews. We have with war contenders and make their predictions on the website. And Harvey, all the best of luck for the Emmys for this Thank year, you. for season three of the show. Thanks so much.